All right, let's take a look at Nordstrom shares up just about one and a half percent here in after hours. The company's full year adjusted EPS guidance coming in at the high end of the range here, coming in better than expected. A big driver here in the after hours action revenue for its most recent quarter for fourth quarter coming in just shy of the street's estimates at 4.32 billion adjusted EPS in line with the street at 74 cents. Let's talk about it and what we could expect here from Nordstrom going forward. We have David Swartz. He's Morning Stars equity analyst. So David, I know you've just had a few minutes here to look at this report, but what's your initial take? It's pretty much in line with what we expected after the earlier announcement in January. Uh, so back in January, Nordstrom had told us that its fourth quarter sales are going to be light. It gave a holiday sales update. And it, it, it appears that January after that, you know, pretty much progressed as expected. So the sales are, are pretty close to expected. It looks like the full line sales were a little bit lower than I expected, but Rack had uh, came in pretty much as I expected, although the quarter were certainly very poor for Rack with sales down 8%. Yeah, that's that's where I was going to go with you. Surprising to see that 8%. What is the strategy moving forward with Rack? That's very unclear yeah. uh, because Nordstrom's management has actually changed the strategy at, at Rack uh, a couple times in the last year or year and a half. Uh, there was talk at one time that Nordstrom would try to sell more or less expensive products at Rack. Uh, then they management seemed to, to uh, believe that that strategy did not work, uh, and they kind of switched it up last uh, on the last report. Um, and said that they're really going to focus on the key brands, which I think is really the strategy that will work for Rack, uh, because the the real benefit of shopping at Rack uh, over a store like TJ Maxx or Ross is that uh, Rack tends to have much nicer brands. People know when they go there that they're going to find brands that they will not normally find at other discount stores. David, a share surged back in February after activist investor Ryan Cohen took a stake in the company. From your perspective, from an analyst perspective, how are you looking at that? Is that potentially good here for Nordstrom going forward, or could it be a distraction? We've heard nothing about this Ryan Cohen story since that initial report, so I, I'm not sure what's going on, if anything. Um, so far, it, it doesn't seem to have amounted to anything. But the company did announce today that they're winding down the Canadian operations. Mm -hmm. This is a surprise. Uh, this was also included with the, in the earnings report, uh, and this is certainly a reversal from the last several years uh, when expan expansion in Canada was a big part of, of Nordstrom's strategy. Um, I don't know if this is, has anything to do with Ryan Cohen at all, but it does indicate that Nordstrom's management is making some big changes in the strategy, and there have also been a lot of management changes at Nordstrom, um, not the Nordstrom brothers, of course, which run the company, but most of the, the managers below them have actually been replaced uh, in the last year or so, including the chief merchandising officer um, just a couple months ago. So there have been a lot of changes at Nordstrom. I think uh, activists like Ryan Cohen could bring in a lot more changes, uh, but we'll have to see if that actually happens. CEO Eric Nordstrom addressed that uh, shutdown of can the Canadian side. We, this will enable us to simplify our operations and further increase our focus on driving long-term profitable growth in our core U.S. business. Um, David, you also cover Macy's. Is there a common thread when it comes to the consumer in these two Q4 reports? It was a very difficult period for all apparel retailers, including both Macy's and Nordstrom. Uh, they were coming off a very strong year uh, for a lot of apparel retail back in 2021. The comparisons uh, to uh, 2021 are very difficult. Um, and so it was pretty likely that it was going to be a, a negative report. Uh, but, you know, I, I think um, Macy's handled uh, the, this, the market conditions better in 2022 than Nordstrom did and certainly better than Kohl's and Gap and some others. Um, I, I don't know that you can say too much at this point, except that expectations are low for the, the first half of 2023. Yeah, could be some tough times ahead. David Swartz, Morningstar Equity Analyst. Great to have you, sir. 